Hi, and welcome to another Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I actually talked to a person that I met on the very first season of this show. It was the season when I didn't know anybody. So what I did is I created a Facebook ad in Madison here and basically said, hey, artists, who wants to be on a podcast? And this person was one of the ones that signed up. I have uh, sort of kept in contact with the person we've emailed back and forth, and uh, they had a few art gallery shows that they did here. They were outside ones. And we talk about how they actually set these shows up and came up with the idea for them uh, because they were bit by a dog. <laughs> There's a story there and I don't really want to tell the story because you'll hear it. So uh, now I connect with this person again and we kind of get updated to what has happened since we spoke on the podcast last. So here is my episode of the podcast starting right now. My name's Jacob Jensen. I'm uh, chilling in my studio and I'm a professional fluid artist. Fluid artist. I was actually, yeah. one of the questions I was going to ask you is how would you describe the work you, that you do? So tell me what a fluid artist is. Well, I don't use a lot of paintbrushes. Generally when I'm working with paint, I'm, I'm pouring it, I'm applying it, and then I'm manipulating it on the medium on the substrate. Okay. So like one of my favorite things to do is, is we talked about um, in my first interview, that's when I started painting reverse on glass. Yeah. And which I still, I still do a lot of that. I've, I pretty much got that down pat. Now I'm kind of branching out in the canvas and um, custom building stretch canvas, like this one here. Um, and yeah, I'm just exploring paint and, using my knowledge of the ba base of paint material from my work to manipulate it mm -hmm. as much as possible. So, and so, yeah, I'm pushing boundaries. I'm I finding like, new boundaries every day. I like how you, though, it started out with glass and now you've moved up to canvas. Whereas, like, you know, most people, it's like you start out on canvas. <laughs> yeah, that, there's some truth to that. And I, canvas is harder. Canvas mm -hmm. is, is harder to work with. When, it, when I'm painting on glass, right, uh -huh. it – it's a very, very thin amount of paint on the glass that's left on it. I mean, it's it's at times almost see-through, mm -hmm. right, until I add the background to it, right? So if I wanted to do like a nebula or like some sort of spatial scene um, with planets, before I add the background onto it, it's almost invisible. Okay. Almost invisible. I mean, you could see it, but it almost looks like dirty glass than a painting on it. Mm -hmm. And then I add the background to it and then the painting comes out and explodes into mm -hmm. it. So whereas canvas, I, I have to use thicker material. Yeah. And I have to, you know, I have to manipulate that material with like the silicones and stuff like that. So that, that slows the dry time, which it, it just, it's, it's a different beast over glass. Right. Is I guess what I'm saying. So, yeah, I guess, you know, it's definitely been more of a challenge than I thought it would be. I thought I would be able to just walk right into canvas and, you know, wham, bam, this is, you know, done. But I'm, I'm finding a lot of complications as I go. Wouldn't it kind of degrade on the glass? I guess I'm wondering, is there a prevention well, okay, for keeping so, it on there? So the, 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 fi the final steps is you, ha you have to seal it. Okay. All right. 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 So w which is really nice with mine because I always use an oil-based sealer spray paint. Okay. You know, oil based sealer. And what's really nice is after it's all done and complete, you can hang it in a bathroom and it won't get destroyed. Because, you know, a lot of paintings from humidity will get destroyed. Yeah. What's nice about these is they, they'll never get destroyed from unless you break the glass. Oh, of course. Yes. Happens. There's always that. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you drop right. a canvas and it's going to probably have some damage to it too. But what, yeah. what kind of paint are you using? Are you using acrylic or oils or what are you I, using? I'm using um, almost exclusively acrylic. Okay. Um, main, mainly because I had overexposure with being in the professional painting industry to oil base and I, I don't like using it anymore. Okay. I feel it in my bones, right. you know, in my wrist and stuff. So, but yeah, I have, I, I have, when I'm doing like a, like a big spray painting project, I'll just build a spray booth inside my studio uh -huh. and then, you know, just do a whole bunch of spray painting. Like I'll spray paint frames and stuff like that and stuff. But yeah, I try to keep my exposure to that at the absolute minimum. But what, what, uh, what I really enjoy working with is a product called Dayglow. Oh yeah, it's a 
Yeah, and it's got awful expensive. And I managed to get um, six gallons of it over the summer. Oh, it because well, because all the product shortages, it was really hard for me to get my hands on. Okay, and th- so that's all black light ready paint, right? And so <laughs> I discovered this as as that's that's the best part about painting is discovery. And what I discovered is that I could use uh, day glow, right? And then I could use um, a non a non um a uh, black light ready paint mm-hmm. paints right and combine them in a painting and then what i'm doing is under black light it's literally a different painting yeah so that's that has been like a ton of fun to work with and and just experiment with and um especially as a fluid artist i'm a, building two different paintings in one painting it's almost you know it's a dream come true in all reality right and uh, but yeah so then um one of, one of the reasons I've been, I switched over to Canvas is is I um I got involved with this uh, local um, art studio here in town in Beaver Dam, mm-hmm. and um she's uh she asked me to come in and start teaching some classes on like abstract and pendulum art and stuff like that. Yeah, which is you know more showy and stuff, and and I, I've been able to get a lot of people involved in the community mm-hmm. and getting a lot of exposure doing that. I'm never ever going to really teach anybody how to work on glass. Right. Cause that's mine. You know, I, for me, I built that, I built my entire system from the ground up and yeah. I, and I'm greedy and I'm not giving it away. <laughs> and I'm not, that's I'm, not I'm, uncommon. I'm, I'm, I get that. Be, yeah, I, I see it. I'm just be, be real. Um, but so by switching over to canvas, I'm able to teach some of these basic techniques that I have. Um, and and not give away all of, well my proprietary knowledge I guess I mean it's kind of hard <laughs> right I call it that it's proprietary it, it, you know it, I think I misspoke um, no but it's, but it's mine, a good you word I, when scary, you said proprietary it's like I get that I mean it's yeah. your it's your thoughts they're coming out of your head so that's your proprietary <laughs> thoughts right so I I wanted to uh, ask something too you said so in Beaver Dam so you're living out in Beaver Dam you used to live here in Madison correct. Yeah. Um, I moved right before COVID. I got okay. priced out. Of, I got priced out of Madison. Okay. Um, for rent. I have a wonderful girlfriend out here and we found a really nice flat, which is where my studio is now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it actually worked out really good, but it happened right before COVID. Okay. So I like moved out here and my whole life stopped. It was just like, Oh, <laughs> it's a new, new town and I can't do anything. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I actually I kind of like it out here. It's a it's a quick commute to Madison. Okay. And um I found it's actually a very friendly to artists okay. too. Um which which surprised me. It, you know, I mean it surprised me as a small community on how open they have been to art and wanting to see my work and stuff. So, yeah. There are a lot more uh, I've noticed that there are a lot more places in small towns that I go to cuz uh, on the weekends I'm always going exploring different small towns around wisconsin and there you'll go to one in the main street will be like there's a gallery and then across the street from that there's another gallery and it's it's something that i've noticed a lot in smaller towns recently so that, that doesn't surprise me yeah and well i well i i was surprised but then again i didn't know what to expect that's and, a good point yeah um, yeah and now i'm actually going to be getting involved with the the dodge county um arts thing in downtown beaver dam and they want to um showcase some of my work coming up in march mm-hmm. which is really exciting and also nerve-wracking oh too course. yeah but, but yeah so i have a big powwow I'll sit down with them i think after the holidays so and then i'll go in and have a talk with them and show them some of my work and talk to them how we're going to hang it and then of course i think in that situation i'll have to have everything insured which is you know a whole another monster to deal with but yeah so. Right. Well, and you were so talking about getting work set up for that gallery, like, so you're a fluid artist and you have work that you're getting set up for the gallery. So what's the process of uh, when you're creating something, when you're like, okay, I have to make some new pieces. What's, what's your process in going forward on like, okay, here's the idea. Here's how I'm going to execute it. Like, how do you, how do you make a piece? What's tell, tell me about your process right now. Well, yeah. So I get like before I was kind of more um, willy nilly where I was just 
trying to get down um, the system for now. I'm more, I'm, I'm very more focused on the final image. Um, I did one in specific. I, I was, I, I like doing nebulas. Nebulas are a lot of fun and they're really popular. Kids just love looking at them. And I, I had the idea of doing like a, a giant octopus nebula. Okay. Right. So my, my, my first, my first thing that I did is, is I took a, a blank piece of glass that I just have floating around and, and I tried to figure out how to do the suction cups. Right. Okay. Because it, it's not going to be an octopus without suction cups. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, it, it, it's part of it. So um, that was a challenge. I spent about two weeks, you know, sitting around trying to figure out how to do suction cups until I finally came up with a surefire method. So from how that point, How are you point, trying to figure was, them was, out? Uh, what was, what was the way that you were going about? Like, how were you doing it over and over again to try and figure it out? Well, uh, where I ended, uh, where I started was with um, a little dowel, okay, a, a toothpick that didn't really work. It kind of, it kind of did, and then I ended up with um, a little uh, syringe. Really, and that created the effect that I needed through the glass. Now, by syringe, do you mean like turkey baster type syringe? There, there's no needle on it or anything. Oh, okay, I see. So it is, it is sort of like it's without the needle, but it's more like yeah. Kind of like uh, yeah. how you would get the get medicine into a baby's mouth. Pretty much. Pretty it's a much, weird way much. to say that. But yeah, I mean, that's really the only other way that I know it. <laughs> I, I just happen to score a whole bunch of them and, you know, put them to use. I feel like I saying can. score a bunch of syringes <laughs> is the right way to go about it. Right. Okay. That sounded bad. What's funny? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. But I get what you're saying. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, so, did, you did this. So and then now you're it, making the octopus. Okay. Yeah, so that that was like the final technique that I needed to figure out. So how can I do the suction cups consistently through the painting? Once I figured that out, um, it's all about just the application. Um, I decided I wanted it to be more of a greeny color, so that means I'm going to stick stick with my, um, you know, greens, yellows, and then I decided that I wanted it to be um, partial black light, partial not black light, give me multiple effects. So then, you know, it's the uh, picking out of the material and then um, the application. And like I said before, it is a different way to paint. Whereas I'm literally, if I wanted to paint an eyeball, right, I have to start with the iris, mm -hmm. and then I, and then I work my way out from there. Okay. So everything's done backwards, which. It's frustrating, but I found I figured out a trick. I figured out a trick. A mirror <laughs> underneath it. It, oh. it became really, really handy, you know, so that I could watch as things are um, being built. Are you saying but you yeah. put a mirror behind the glass? Underneath it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I can watch it being built. It's kind of hard, but it, I mean, it works. It kind of works. <laughs> yeah, makes so, sense. I get it. Yeah. But yeah, so then I switch over to canvas and I have to switch everything the opposite way. So, but yeah, um, yeah, so that's kind of how I start. I have a whole list of different, different ideas. Like this one up here is, um, discovery of fire, man discovering fire. This okay. was a personal challenge from a friend of mine. And, uh, yeah, so this one's on canvas. And then I think after I have it on canvas, so people can't see what I'm doing, pointing at, but I have like some really, really giant um, pieces of glass ready to go. So I'm going to turn around and I'm gonna put it on glass. Mm -hmm. So that's actually kind of been kind of fun with working with canvas. I can kind of explore some ideas and um, not tear up a whole bunch of glass because, you know, it's once the paint gets on the glass, it can be it can be very, very hard to get it off if the painting doesn't work. Yeah. And. So yeah, it, that's, that's been kind of fun with that too. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I basically like for topics, I just paint whatever I want. That's kind of like why, um, I, I decided when I decided on my, my studio name, which is Dada studios, it gave me a lot of freedom with just with that name. So I can kind of just do whatever I want. I have no real rules here. And you, you said, uh, when we were starting the call, you had said you were just going to be moving into a new studio space too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, um, I'm really excited about that. I, I had the, the final, um, sit down with my new landlord and, um, yeah, so I'm going to have 
uh, a, it's going to be, um, what I need is I need a, a clean room, you know, for doing clean work and dust free. Mm -hmm. And then I need a wet room where I can just, you know, go to town with paint. And so that's exactly what I'm getting. And then I'm getting a, a, a front gallery area. It was, it's not street gallery and it won't be open to the public, but it will be a place where I can showcase art, right. chill out, you know, and uh, yeah, it'll be, it's, it's all my own space. And right now it's pretty rough. I have to get in there and remodel it all and get it all cleaned up. So actually this afternoon I have a meeting with a contractor oh, wow. to go over and sit down and talk with, talk with him about what we need to do to get it up and running. So. Okay. Well, that's pretty exciting. Today. Yeah. Nice. Well, I, okay. And then how long have you been looking for a place? Um, a while now. Right. And, and finding it, it, you know, I could find it. I could find a room to rent that I could put a studio in, but I'm kind of looking. It, it It's going to sound dumb. I'm, I, when I walked into this area, I liked the energy of the area. I liked the way it felt. I liked the the light coming in through the windows. I felt like I felt really comfortable there. Yeah. And I looked at a couple of other places and they were just kind of cold and harsh. And it's like, this is not what I want to be in. I want to be in, you know, from the spend the money, you know what I mean? I want it to be nice and I want it to be exactly how I want it to be. And that's what's really nice about these people is they said, it's really rough. You clean it up. It's yours. Okay. So, yeah. And I, I think that was like the selling point for me. It's like, perfect. Right. How did, did you just see it on the street? Like, how do you even, I know locating a oh, studio so is a difficult started, thing. Yeah. Well, I started teaching classes um, in, in the store downtown and it happens to be the owner of that business okay. had the space available. So it was just kind of like all just like all the dominoes fell into place gotcha. for me, which was really nice. It was just boom, boom, boom. Next thing I know, I'm going to be remodeling my own art studio. Yeah. No. So yeah. Just kind of like just all worked out super organic and it was, it was not like he even had to try. Yeah. But you know, I have been looking for, at other places and I hadn't really found anything. And explain to me too, like, uh, so you were teaching classes now, how do you, how do you find a class to teach? How, how did you come about uh, actually teaching people about art oh, and things like that? Um, that's actually kind of funny. So should start as a professional painter. Um, I, I get a lot of paint mm -hmm. and a lot of paint often and it's access from jobs and a lot of times this gets thrown away so what i started doing is i started saving like some of the cooler colors you know blues reds greens whatever and whatever i didn't need in my studio i would give to the people down at the art store it's called oh, okay. art on the walk right and super nice people and I, I called them up i said do you want any paint And they said absolutely so and i just started bringing them paint you're talking house paint yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just paint. And it's not oil. It's interior. Right. Yeah. Interior, exterior. I just, it's red. You know, it wasn't you know? like people were handing you like, here's some tempera or something like that. You know, it no, was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's house paint. It's yeah. house paint. And, you know, they just use it up, especially, you know, white. They'll take white and then they use it as primer for, you know, lots of stuff. Yeah. And that's kind of how I, I just started going down there and giving them paint and meeting them. And then I met the owner and um, we just started chatting and. She kind of like, it was kind of funny one day she like tested me. She's like, she's like, I was, we're walking by this like green picnic table mm -hmm. and you know, it's green treated wood. And she's like, I was thinking about painting that with milk based paint. And I looked at her, I was like, why would you use casein paint on a picnic table? I was like, we use that in theater ceilings, you know? No. And she's like, and she looked at me and she's like, Ooh, you know, your paint. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, you were testing me. <laughs> so and so we kind of hit it off as just friends and stuff and then just she said that um she asked me one day if i had done pendulum art i know if anybody knows what that is you, you take a bucket you put a hole in the bottom and you swing it from the ceiling and you can make really cool patterns and it's a lot of fun and i was like yeah yeah i've done pendulum art she's like would you want to show us how to do it mm -hmm. and i was like all right so the next thing i know i have 25 students standing there wanting to learn how to do pendulum art <laughs> so <laughs> And that, and that just, that was a lot of fun. We had a, a lot of really successful um, paintings come out of it. Um, 
and uh, I had a really, I showed them how to do a really perfect, you know, the, the Chinese finger weave, which that's a lot, that's a really fun one to do. And, um, yeah. And then, um, she asked me if I wanted to do it again. No, no. Someone found me in the grocery store Oh, and they were like, Hey, you're that guy that taught that class. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, do you want to, would you be willing to do it again? And I said, absolutely. So yeah. they set it up on Facebook and I went in and this time I didn't want to do the pendulum arm again because it was slow and I don't know. I just didn't feel like doing it. Yeah. So I did a, um, I did a push pull technique that I do where I push paint and I stack it coming back across. It's a really fun way to get like wave effects, um, flower effects, if you want a really slick technique on how to get perfect bark on a painting, okay. I, oh, I can show you the, the slickest way. And what I do is I just I, I push the paint and I pull it back and forth. And this is no brush. I don't use a brush at all. And You do it by was, tilting was, it. Yeah, by using gravity, mm-hmm. you know, mostly. Okay. And, um, you know, manipulating the paint quite a bit. And so, yeah, that time I had, I had five students show up and – um, well, the weather kind of sucked, so I understood. <laughs> so right. I was lucky to get there. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so that was a lot of fun where I had, like, um, I was able to just, like, really get involved with each student and kind of push them and push them and, um, you know, nudge them along because I don't make their paintings. I refuse to do that. Right. Now, I'm not making your painting. That's your work. Yeah. But I'll, I'll push them along and kind of help remove the fear. So a lot of people I've noticed have fear. You know, they don't want to take the, the, the plunge it's just you know get the paint wet and get going mm-hmm. and so that was a lot of that and that was a lot of fun i had i had a lady show up she's never made a piece of art in my in her life and she walked out with a beautiful painting absolutely gorgeous nice i was jealous i was jealous and she wanted jellyfish that was the best thing she wanted jellyfish i explained to her some techniques on how to get jellyfish mm-hmm. and it was phenomenal absolutely phenomenal Never made a piece of art in her life. Nice. That's yeah, awesome. Painted yeah. And that's what so you, that's, that's, that's what everybody hopes for from showing up to an art class. <laughs> they would love to walk out with like, holy crap, look what I did. Yeah. Right. So yeah, with, with that going, now I have um I'm gonna do like a, a more it's gonna be more for like serious artists. Um, um we we have a couple of ideas on this next class that they want me to teach. I'm going to Either just be teaching like just a pure straight abstract class from the come in or just talk about abstract, talk about maybe a little bit of history of abstract, you know, get into maybe some Dada surrealism Mm -hmm. and then um, just start pushing them on. um, You know, you wouldn't believe how many people just add all three primary colors together and just don't know what the hell they're doing. It it drives (laughs) me bonkers. So if I could keep them from not adding all three of their primaries together, um, I think I'll be doing good. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> and and help keep them on track as an abstract painting is being built, you know, um, and just, yeah. So that's going to be my next one. And that's going to be like either three or four classes, two hours on Sundays. Okay. So, so they're going to be able to, you know, hopefully be able to produce a lot of art, you know, and um, so it's, yeah, that, that one, I, when we started to originally talk about that, I was like, Ooh, very limited amount of students. I don't want to have 25 people in there talking about abstract art. That just sounds like a headache. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. So yeah, this is just going to be, you know, five, six, uh, five, six people in me. So it'll be like more me kind of getting really involved and in doing hands-on stuff with people, showing them different techniques. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm really, really excited about that. And you recently started doing uh, neighborhood gallery shows too. How did you get involved in that? Oh, I, and and I've been invited to two, and I was out of town for one, and then I went to the other, and they were like, "Oh, they've already packed up and left." <laughs> oh, it's freezing! I was freezing! I was freezing that day. So I know. I w- well, I got there late too. I was there like on the last half hour, so I, I wasn't. I was just like, I felt bad that I missed you, but I'm like, eh, he wasn't going to sit around all day in this cold. <laughs> But anyway, how did you how did you get uh, involved in the neighborhood art? I, w- I was watching TV one day with my girlfriend, and there was a TV show where this woman drove around and she did pop up plant sales. Okay, pop up plant sales, and I was like, that's a really good idea, and uh, and I was like, I want to do that. It's kind of funky story. I'll keep it brief, but I got 
I got bit in my hand by a dog on 4th of July. Okay. Right. It was <laughs> Waiting bad. to see where this goes. So, just, bear, just bear with me. Just bear with me. I, it was bad. And, and I got up the next day and I said, um, I'm a, I got to do the plunge. If I get my hand moving again, so at this point, I didn't know if my hand was going to move again. Uh, I'm going to do the plunge and I'm going to do an art show. I'm going to do it and I'm not going to, you know, hold back. Cause I was always, you know, trepidation on holding back and not doing it and just producing art and then letting it sit in the corner and stuff. So I get up the next day and I made myself that promise. And a few days later, I got my hand moving again and I'm a man of my word. So I had to hold myself to it. So okay. that pop-up art show. So I asked one of my customers, I said, you have a great driveway. Is there any chance I could do an art show in it? Mm-hmm. And she was like, sure, that's a great idea. So I set the date and 30 days later, I had to be ready for an art show. Okay. So that's how it got started. And they're, they're nerve wracking, a lot of work, but a ton of fun. Oh yeah. And and so I have an I, I have another one coming up. I have actually a re- personal request if I would do one in their driveway. Oh, huh. um, yeah. So it's kind of fun. So it's you... like a garage sale art show. And the best part is there's no I don't have to pay anybody commission. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so are you saying you set these up yourself or were you finding them? I set them up myself. Okay. They're a pop up art show. Okay. So how are you reaching out to people to do these with you as well? Because you did two in Madison. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just, uh, w- well, I went up to a friend of mine that lives in a swanky neighborhood and I said, can I do an art show in your driveway? Oh, that's how you did she's that. Like, okay. She's like, she's like, when I said, when's good for you. And she's like, oh, they're going to do this art walk here. So why don't you do it then? I was like, okay. So okay. Yeah. That's how I ended up at my second one. And then I have another one and he's got a heated garage. So that will be nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that makes more sense. On the second one that I went to, when I did go there, that the person who told me that you guys had left, I was looking around and it was an art walk. So when you were saying you were setting these up, I'm like, are you setting up art walks? And it was like, no, you just happened to find someone who was like, oh, we're actually doing I, one of these here. I, gotcha. it, you know, I'm, I'm doing the whole thing. I would, uh, uh, I would rather just apologize. You know, you know what I mean? I'd right. rather apologize afterwards and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this, rather than, um, you know, asking for permission. Oh, I guess. yeah, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but yeah. So they're like they're an art show slash garage sale. I like that. That's that's actually uh, I I like it being presented that way. I think that's cool. Yeah. And what's what I found is that the like the neighborhood, um, especially on my first one, I had all these little kids come running over and they're like, "What are you doing?" And you know, I started showing them my artwork and they're like, "Oh." So and you know, I I love kids. You know, I love being around them and stuff. Yeah. So that was really really cool. And then their parents came over, and then next thing you know, I'm selling a painting to their parents, and it's just like, "Yeah, this is a good idea," you know. <laughs> and so, I, my first one, I sold five paintings. Okay. Nice. That, that's that was phenomenal. I mean, five paintings on yeah. a pop-up art show. Yeah. So, yeah. And then my second one, I sold six. Nice. Two of them afterwards and then four right there. Afterwards? How did you sell them afterwards? I, I just gave them my phone number, gave oh, them my okay. card. Gotcha. And then they called me. And, they, and then, yeah. So I've actually been kind of averaging since since uh, since this all started. Um, a painting about every week, to, every two weeks is getting sold. Okay. And this is all just in person. In person. Yeah. Okay. I did it. I did a show um last weekend. Not this weekend, last weekend. And um I did a pop up art show in a, a local bar here. Okay. And in, in Beaver Dam. And that that was great. You know, I just I got a ton of exposure. Um I, I was just and what I liked about that is because who goes out to buy a painting? Right. You know. You know, no one does, but I'll guarantee you when you go to the grocery store and you need to get some bread, some eggs, and you see a nice bouquet of flowers, mm-hmm. guess who's getting flowers, you know? And so that's kind of how I did that one. So, you know, I had some people that, um, you know, I had one, I was like, one guy bought one. I was like, I was like, I'm going to do you a favor and I'm going to drop it off at your house tomorrow. At, so, cause you're a little too tipsy and he's like, thank you. So yeah, so that, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just, just like, just, I don't know just kind of doing these pop-up events it's it's nerve-wracking but a ton of fun and it's got my name out there yeah and 
uh, you know, I mean, that's the one thing artists, you know, you need, you need your name out there. And this is just like a crazy way to do it. Yeah. I like it. No, it's really good. That's, it's cool that you decided to go forward and actually start doing that. Now on top of this, do you, I know you still don't have a website. Do you have any plans to build yourself a website in the future? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's actually in the works. Um, I got, I got a guy, um, a good friend of mine. He's actually going to be building me a website here. Nice. And, um, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, something that he's got some program and he said he can do it in an afternoon. Okay. And so, yeah. So hopefully that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I'm on Facebook, uh, Dada art studios. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting, getting there. I'm not, well, of course. Very I'm, not at, I'm not saying I'm you not have to, I was just <laughs> asking. I'm not, I'm not no, shaming I, you for it. <laughs> well, it's, it, See, I was thinking about this because I listened to, I didn't, originally I was like, ah, I'm never doing a website because, you know, who goes to a website? Now I'm realizing how, how much more um, professional it looks. Yeah. You know, as an artist to have a, to have a professional quality website. And in the beginning I kind of shunned it and now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking that far more seriously. Right. But, well, and it yeah. goes along just, with what you were well, it goes along with what you were saying before too. Like you left your number for the people who were there afterwards, but there are also people who, when they see it go, I can't buy a painting right now. But then when they go to look for you, they want to be able to contact you. You can't always leave your phone number for somebody who just right. happens by there's yeah, there's a way for them to try and contact you after the fact. And even, I mean, Facebook, yes, that's good, but it's not that easy. I mean, you even searching for your name on Facebook, there's like, 20 other Jake Jensen's <laughs> that are on yeah, there. I, I, well, yeah, there's a lot of Tom Ray's too, by exactly. the way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it's exact, very much so. I, I still, even though my name is in my website, if you search me on Google, I'm not the first thing that pops up. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not the first Jake Jensen out there. Right. Either. Exactly. So it's a constant <laughs> struggle to try and make, uh, help people find you. Um, right. I did notice where I've been getting a lot of exposure on is Instagram. And, um, people have been sharing my work a lot, quite a bit on Instagram Oh, cool! and that I had I actually got, uh, contacted and a sale from Instagram nice. two weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah, so the website's definitely, you know, in the works, but I, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. The aver like personal advertisement and getting your name out there. It's frustrating. Oh, very but much so. Yeah. I'm. I'm kind of taking more of this uh, hammer approach where I'm just going to try to, I'm, I, you know, I'm just break, go in there and talk to him, you know, like this bar. I just, I just went in there and I said, Hey, somebody said that you, you're a cool guy. Would you want to do an art show? And the guy's like, sure. When do you want to do it? I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, December 10th. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. There you go. So, I love it. You, were, you went in there specifically to achieve a task. And then when they were like, okay, you were like, oh crap, I wasn't prepared for this. Right. <laughs> almost, I was almost expecting no. Of course, but, everybody is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you expect that before you expect people to say yes. Um, so what are some of the things that you have coming up in the future? Um, so I have, a, I have a, a March. I'm going to be showing in the Dodge County um arts place here in beaver dam okay um i have to talk to them after the holidays um they're kind of hard to get a hold of but whatever i figured holidays after that everything calms down yeah, yeah so they do their switch they do their art switch out then and they want me to show there oh cool and then um i had this class coming up in january and then i'm gonna hopefully april 1st be moving my whole studio and then we <laughs> In the spring, this is kind of going to be a fun one. Um, we're going to do a kegger um, <laughs> adult art show, right? Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna have a barrel of beer, five bucks a cup, okay? Um, maybe a band, and uh, it's going to be an art show. So there's uh, I have um, quite a few other artists that are uh, looking forward to that one. So that's going to be our big spring kickoff. Is that going to be outside spring. or inside? Where's that? Yeah, gonna... it's going to be outside in Madison. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> yeah. And that's going to be like a bunch of my old punker friends are going to come and it's just going to be a, a, like a party art show, kind of just get everybody together for spring, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's one that I've been getting prepared for. 
that one should be a blast. <laughs> nice. um, and then I'm, I'm doing a whole another series uh, that should be released. Hopefully, I'm I'm kind of pushing myself. I'm hoping for next July, but it's all paper mache. And I'm what I'm doing is it's it's all sculpture work because I'm telling a story um, through different dolls, creepy dolls. Okay. Uh, with that are all made out of paper mache. And so I'm hoping I'll release that in like the the middle of the summer. All right. And yeah, that one should be that one should be a lot of fun. That one should be a lot of fun. Nice. And everybody can thank Trump for that one. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a lot of fun for everybody. That's awesome. Well, if people wanted to uh, go see this in the future, where would you suggest they go? And you don't have to say the website right now. Just like right now, where could people go to check out your stuff? Oh, for right now, I'd go to Facebook. Um, Dada Art Studio is going to be the easiest place. Um, I don't know if they want to give me a call directly. That is fine, too. I answer my phone every time. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the easiest place right now is, is um, going to be Facebook. And then and um, I would do a lot of announcements for pop-up art shows um, coming up here. So I do all that on Facebook. And, um, yeah, I've been doing them kind of over in the Monroe street area. So if anybody lives over there, that's that I'm the guy that's been doing those all the summer. <laughs> so, nice. all but right. yeah, I mean, the easiest way right now is just to go to Facebook and I, I do, um, quite a few of my paintings are posted up there Cool. right now. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for contacting me again and catching me up on what you've been doing since the first season of the podcast. Yeah. Thank you for getting me back. This, this was a lot of fun. Thank you.